This is a short video that demonstrates how to use HexEdit's built-in parser. This is an actual example of how I created a very useful template in just a few minutes. When creating a template you first need to open a file of the type of uh, file you want to create the template for. I'm just going to open a file called savers.qdx. Now I'm pretty sure this file has fixed size records of 512 bytes so I'm just going to go into the options dialog and change the number of columns to 512 so I've added a few extra buttons onto the menu bar here um, this is just for convenience as I don't have much uh, space to work with in this video if I switch to character view you can see from that that uh, a record size of 512 bytes seems OK. So I'll just switch back to hex. Now we're ready to create the template, so I'll just go into template new. The default template has a single data field of type none, which you can see if I just expand that and you can just edit this by double clicking or right clicking and selecting edit. Now uh, the interesting thing about this is it has a blank length field so the data element uh, eats up all the bytes to the end of the file. It's uh, useful to have this data field here while we're making the template but I'll probably delete it later so I'll just cancel that. Now the default view is um, having the template in a split window on the left with the normal data view on the right uh, because I haven't got much space I'm just going to switch to a tabbed view now this puts the um, template view in a separate tab I also like to turn on the um, hex address the size and the data columns and you can just resize those columns now we can invoke the parser, which I just do by right clicking the null element and selecting this item here, which brings up the parse dialog. Now we just want to grab the uh, structure from the, the header file, so I've got, already got it open in Visual Studio. Uh, it starts here finishes here, so I'm just going to grab this structure, copy that to the clipboard, go back to hex edit, paste. Now uh, I've got to fix a few things in here. First of all, the header files normally just contain uh, declarations of types, such as this type def. I want to change it to be an actual variable definition, so just get rid of that type def. Also notice that there was a hash define here, we need the long version of this structure, so I'm going to copy that and hash define that so we get the long version. There's also uh, a lot of bit fields in here which are um, single, well they're declared as char, so um, to make that work properly we've got to turn on this flag here uh, which says to use a storage unit of size char rather than the default of uh, 4 and also um, we need to change the packing if you if go back to Visual Studio there's actually a pragma pack near the top of this source file somewhere uh, I don't know why it's only for C++ but if we go into the settings of the project you'll also notice under code generation that the alignment is set to 1 rather than the default of 8 so if we go back to the hex edit here we need to change the alignment to 1 I think that's it, so I'll just click OK and there we go 
I think you'll agree that looking at the data like this is much better than wading through bytes in the hex view. There's an interesting one here which is that uh, in the original source code this is a, a union which has been um, parsed into a sequence of structs all starting at the same address. Now that's really a, just a design issue to see all these jumps. You can actually go turn off design mode and um, you won't actually see the jumps. It would be better if this was implemented, this union was implemented as a switch because obviously only one of these structs is valid for the actual data of the file. It, it would actually branch on this promotion type field. Um, but I'll leave that for another video. Okay, so we've added one promo to the template, but the file actually consists of many promo records. So to handle this, we're just going to enclose the promo inside a for element, which sort of makes an array of promos. Now I'm just going to call that promo as well. And I'm going to leave the count and stop fields empty, which just means that the array will continue all the way to the end of the file, which is exactly what we want. I'll click OK there, and now we can see that we have six promos. Which if I go back to the hex view, we can see that we had six records. And we also notice that the none element is now grey. Now, when, when something's grey, it generally means there's something wrong with it. In this case, none is it starts at the end of file, so it has zero length. If we turned off design mode, we wouldn't even see this, but um, we can delete it now. So I'll just right-click and say delete. Are you sure? Yes. Now, if you want to see how these um, fields of the template relate to the actual bytes of the file, you can use these sync and auto sync buttons. I'll just switch back to split window. Um, now if we go to say the third promo and we want to find out where the byte for promo type is, we just click sync and it shows us you can conversely click a byte in the hex area and find to find out where that is in the template you just click sync again and you can see that that's part of the end date of promo 4. Auto sync allows you to move through the file and it will automatically highlight the, uh, the bits Okay, I think you've seen from this demo how e how easy it is to create a hex edit template using the um, the C source code parser. The parser built into hex edit is really powerful. It can handle just about any sort of C or C++ code you can throw at it and handles you know everything from unions, bit fields as you've seen, um, and alignment anything in standard C and a lot of non-standard stuff as well. You can actually do a lot more things with templates than you that can be handled by uh, C structs such as having variable length data fields, arrays of bit fields even, and branches and loops, and recursive structures, but I'll have to um, demonstrate that in a later video. One problem with this template is um, that for a large file it would take a really long time to display and we can ad actually address this by using a new feature that I added in Excel at 3.5 which is called floating templates but I'll, I'll actually demonstrate that in the next video.